the military industrial complex is the hitman of u.s imperialism and yes it has its own agenda and yes it's constantly lobbying to get more work and it wants to you know get more money and resources and yes it's propping up the u.s economy but this is a big mistake, a big mistake that was made during the Cold War. It was assuming that the military industrial complex is it, right? And this is the big mistake that, and really you wanna know why, why the US left dropped the ball. And actually this is a big theme in my upcoming book. This was the, the mistake that was made by the Communist Party, it was made by the Workers' World Party, it was made by most of the US left. And, and it was, a, I mean, I think the Soviet Union made this, this mistake as well. It was, a, it, was a, it was just a miscalculation that at the time that, you know, in the late Cold War stage, 70s and 80s, there was a feeling the Soviet Union felt like the main enemy they had in the United States was the military industrial complex, which was escalating the arms race. The Communist Party felt like the main enemy of, of, you know, of the U.S. working class. The main enemy of, uh, you know, was the military industrial complex. The Workers' World Party felt that way. Everyone decided that the main enemy, the main threat to global communism was the military industrial complex. And, I mean, the military industrial complex is awful. It's absolutely awful, no doubt about it. But it's just the hitman. Okay, it's a hitman. For a system. And the liberals were a more effective evil. The liberals were very effective in dismantling the American leftist movement and confusing it, number one, and eventually bringing down the Soviet Union. And when Ronald Reagan escalated the arms race against the Soviet Union, it while it cost a lot of resources to the Soviet Union and hurt their economy, it also had kind of a rally around the flag effect. But when Bernie Sanders and liberal Democrats went over to the Soviet Union and made nice nice and ideologically penetrated the Soviet Union. That was a problem. The time the Soviet Union fell, the reason the Soviet Union fell, it wasn't because their economy had been just devastated. I mean, it was that was a factor. But the reason the Soviet Union fell was a very big chunk of the Soviet Communist Party did not think the United States was a threat. Thought that the United States would, would basically, if they gave up the Soviet Union, they'd be able to keep their, you know, their guaranteed jobs and healthcare and their state industries and all of that, but they'd be able to shop at Walmart and the United, they, they didn't understand. They did not understand that the United States was a threat to them. And I talked to, I've talked to people who were over there at the time and there was in Soviet society, there was not an understanding that the United States was going to go in and destroy Russia after the fall of the Soviet Union, which is what happened, right? Russia was economically devastated in the nineties. There was this feeling that Reagan and the military industrial complex were bad, but all these Democrats and liberals and, you know, Walter Mondale, and they were all good friends. And people in the Soviet Union thought that, that, uh, thought that Noam Chomsky was a household name. They thought all Americans were listening to Noam Chomsky. They weren't. Most Americans had no idea who Noam Chomsky was. On the Soviet Union, people said, you know, we've heard in the United States the Communist Party is very small. It only has like a million members. <laughs> A million, you know, uh, there was a whole confusion in the Soviet Union. There was a belief. There was a lot of people who believed that their enemy was the military industrial complex and it was Ronald Reagan and that it wasn't that it, that, that, that there was a whole apparatus of liberals and all that who were for their friends. And that was a lie. And what those liberals were doing is they were going over there to the Soviet Union and they were, they were cozying up to people and they were getting, they were, they were feeding into the delusion. That, that, the, that most of the United States, that there were elements of the United States that were friendly to them, that didn't want to overthrow their system, that didn't want to loot their country economically. That was going on in the, in the, in the 80s, right? It was going on, um, you know, um, and, and that was going on. And the other thing that you have to remember was that there was a, you know, nuclear power was a big issue, right? So the Soviet Union had nuclear power and the United States, the military industrial complex here in the United States was very involved in building nuclear power plants, right? Nuclear power is just a form of energy, okay? Um, big oil companies don't like nuclear power because it's a threat to oil, right? When, when you know, I mean, if people are using nuclear power, they ain't using oil. The Rockefellers, the Carnegies, the DuPonts, all the oil banking families, the ultra-rich that are in with the CIA, they went all out against nuclear power. And... You know, they led protests in the United States. They funded environmental activism against nuclear power. 
In the Soviet Union, there was a big anti-nuclear power movement, uh, Chernobyl and other groups, and it combined with the anti-nuclear weapons movement. And this became a mechanism through which the fake liberal left and the, the pro-Gorbachev, pro-American wing of the Soviet Communist Party could start having a relationship. And it was the, the liberals, basically. The liberals, the Brzezinski crowd, that were protesting nuclear power, were protesting the arms race. They created this, this illusion in the Soviet Union that, that, the liberal, that the United States was not a threat to them. And that this was going on. And one key aspect of this, um, you know, was in the United States, nuclear power. If you're a Marxist, you can't be against nuclear power, right? You can obviously want not trust corporations that carry out nuclear power and say that corporations are too greedy, right? You can call for workers' control of nuclear power. But arguing that nuclear power itself is not okay, right? That's not Marxism, right? You know? Obviously, you can be suspicious of the corporations who do it. Obviously, you can say that it needs to be done properly. But saying that, oh, you can't play God, you can't, you know, split an atom for electricity, it's too dangerous, it's not, it's, it's ruining Mother Nature, that's not Marxism. It's not Marxism, right? And the movement against nuclear power, the movement, the huge protests that went on in the early 80s in the United States against nuclear power, were being funded by big oil companies, and they were being used to, you know, develop, you know, uh, ties between, you know, the reformist and sellout wing of the Soviet Communist Party and the CIA. Um, but the communist groups in the United States, and at first the Communist Party, they wrote articles. Victor Perlow wrote an article in defense of nuclear power. Gus Hall said, well, we're for, you know, public control of nuclear power. We're not against nuclear power. We're for workers' control of nuclear power. Sam Marcy of the Workers' World Party also said, you know, we're not against nuclear power. We're for workers' control of nuclear power. But there were these big, liberal, hippie demonstrations going on against nuclear power. And these demonstrations were not good. They were basically being used to manipulate people in the Soviet Union. They were being used to push pessimism um, among American leftists and push the idea that growth is bad. Um, but what happened was that because they were focused on going after the military-industrial complex, right? because that's who was involved in nuclear power, it's all the military corporations, because the military-industrial complex was the target, the Communist Party, the Workers' World Party, and all the leftists in the United States basically joined the anti-nuclear movement. And that was a strategic blunder because at the end of the day, it wasn't the military-industrial complex that toppled the Soviet Union. They helped, right, by forcing the Soviets to spend lots of money on their military. But ultimately, it was that revisionist, reformist wing, that Gorbachevist wing, those those dupes, those people in the, the big chunk of the Soviet Communist Party that stopped believing in communism, that thought America was a nice, happy, happy, fun land, that thought Americans were all a bunch of hippies, and, and it was that, that liberal wing, that, 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 liberal, that liberal wing of American politics that basically manipulated and duped a lot of people in the Soviet Union. It's those people that ultimately toppled the Soviet Union. Right? It was the, the Gorbachev folks uh, that, that eventually they threw in the towel. Gorbachev didn't believe in communism. And when, time, when you know, it came time, he threw in the towel. Right? And the, this, this, is, this is important to understand. And it's also these folks, the synthetic left, the CIA, the anti-military industrial complex wing, the soft power apparatus, they're the folks that have ruined American leftism. They're the folks that have ruined American leftism when it gets down to it. Right? They're the folks that, you know, I mean, they're the folks that's bread, the bread tube, you know, it's the folks that, that, that have supported every color revolution around the world. And that that soft power apparatus that is against the military industrial complex, that is very into nature and environmentalism, that's very into the occult and mysticism, Marilyn Ferguson, the Silicon Valley fascists, those folks are not our friends. And that is the problem. The Soviet Union thought those folks were their friends. The Communist Party thought those folks were our friends. The Workers' World Party thought those folks were our friends. The hippies are not our friends, okay? I'm just being real about it. The hippies, the, the back-to-nature, mystical, occult, pessimism, those folks are not our friends. They're not our friends. If you're a communist, people that want to roll back human civilization right, and go back to more primitive ways, people who want to reduce the human population, people who don't believe in science and don't believe in scientific progress, 
People who, who think that, that, that there are too many people in the world and we need to reduce people from breeding. People who don't believe in technology. Uh, people who think poverty is beautiful. People who are opposed to human progress. They're not our friends, right? And that Marxism is separate from the synthetic left. And this is the point of the book, book I'm working on. Cam, I, I hear you. I, I've addressed many times that question about Iran and I understand your concerns, Cam. All right. Um, all right. And, you know, I mean, this is a theme in the, the upcoming book. I, I'm going over it again, the book on the synthetic lab. But this is what we need to understand, that the hippie stuff, counterculture, the occult, drugs, LSD, uh, drug culture, this stuff is not communism. This stuff is not communism, okay? Um, you know, uh, you know the, the Dalai Lama has been a CIA asset for years, right? The Falun Gong... The, the Hare Krishna movement, um, you know, I mean, primitivism, uh, you know, drug culture, this stuff is not Marxism. Hippieism is not Marxism. And the CIA that set that stuff up, this big new Brzezinski, Silicon Valley, Marilyn Ferguson, these people are not our friends. They were not friends of the Soviet Union. They're not friends of American communists. And that was the mistake. When these people were organizing their nuclear protests, all nukes are bad, Mother Nature doesn't like nukes, you know, I'll go back to nature, nuclear power is bad. Well, when they were doing that, and the communists, at first, they knew it was wrong. Gus Hall knew it was wrong. Victor Perlow knew it was wrong. Sam Marcy knew it was wrong. But they miscalculated. They thought, okay, well, these people are bad, but the military-industrial complex is the main enemy. That's what they thought. They thought the military-industrial complex, Ronald Reagan, they're the main enemy. So even though these people are putting out a reactionary worldview, even though they're against science, even though they're against scientific progress, it's okay. The, the cultural, whatever you want to call them, that element, right? Because they're against the military-industrial complex, we're going to pour all our resources into supporting them. And that was the mistake. And if you read Sam Marcy's Generals Over the White House, which is a book he wrote as Jimmy Carter was basically being pushed out of office, you read Sam Marcy's Generals Over the White House, you read old issues of the Communist Party newspaper from the 80s, look, we miscalculated. The Soviet Union miscalculated. American communists miscalculated. A lot of people miscalculated. We were wrong. We were wrong. We thought that the hippies, the hippies were not as dangerous as Reagan. When it gets down to it, the hippies were far more dangerous than Ronald Reagan. If all Ronald Ray, if Ronald Reagan had just escalated the arms race, the Soviet Union would have had to escalate the arms race, but the people would have remained loyal to communism. It was the liberals with their soft power maneuvers. It was big new Brzezinski and their manipulation of communists against each other. You know, they called it strategic de-escalation. You read about, I'm reading, I've read a biography of Zbigniew Brzezinski. It's the liberals with their ideological penetration, their, their confusion of the movement. They're the ones that ultimately destroyed the Soviet Union, destroyed the American left. I mean, look at the left now. I mean, it, I mean, there's like three or four communist groups that have any base among the population. There's all these people interested in socialism, but, but the communist movement in the United States is like in shambles. Why is this? It was the synthetic left, right? The, the people at Black Agenda Report talk about this as being the more effective evil. And this is what we need to understand, that, that the military-industrial complex is bad. It is absolutely bad. Don't get me wrong. It is absolutely bad. I'm not endorsing the military-industrial complex. But to just assume that they are the main enemy, no, 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 no. They have a rival. There's a rival faction, a smarter, more sinister, more manipulative evil within the ruling class. The ultra-rich, the globalists, you might call them, the, uh, the, the Silicon Valley fascists, right? the Aquarian conspiracy. And those folks, you know, they, they are much more strategic and much more sinister and much more effective in their evil. Much more effective. You think that the Arab Spring would have gone the way it did if George W. Bush had been president? Think about it. You know, if George W. Bush had been president during the Arab Spring, we'd have like 10 more Irans in the Middle East, right? All those countries, the people would have rose up and overthrown the U.S.-aligned governments and set up an anti-imperialist state. But with Barack Hussein Obama, a man who went to a Muslim school when he was a kid and, you know, said he was resetting relations with the Middle East and, and, and you know, showed that the United States was getting over its race problems and with Barack Hussein Obama as President of the United States, 
sending a message to the people of the Middle East. Don't worry. We're your friends. We're your friends. We care about you. Oh, look, Netanyahu and me, we hate each other. Think about how much, how, how many people died as a result. How, you see what has been, happened in Syria. Syria, an anti-imperialist state reduced to a civil war. Libya, uh, bombed and destroyed into nothing. And the wealthiest country in Africa, ruined you know, by American imperialism. It took the synthetic left. It took the, the sinister liberal faction to do this. It took the Silicon Valley fascists to do this. It took the liberals to do this, right? The liberals are the more effective evil. They're the more effective evil. And we have made the mistake in our movement of thinking that they are better than the military industrial complex. And they're different than the military industrial complex. They're different than the military industrial complex. They are definitely different, okay? They're not better. And in some, they're, they're actually, I think it's, you know, I mean, like, again, Black Agenda Report, they call them the more effective evil, because that's what they are. And we need to understand this. And if you study the late Cold War, you study Zbigniew Brzezinski and his career. Brzezinski, I've, I've studied this man, an evil genius. You read his book, The Technotronic Age. This man was, was, was satanic, but he was a brilliant man. He was a genius. He was a genius Satan, okay? And if you study Zbigniew Brzezinski, Right? You study Anne-Marie Slaughter. You study the Council on Foreign Relations and what they published. These people are far, far more dangerous. Far more dangerous than some you know, military corporation that just wants to make money. Again, think about the mafia. Right? The hitman is bad, but it's the Don who sends them. It's the Don who sends them. 